Hey guys, it's Gaden over here, continuing with the trend of making more videos. This is a video that I actually made a long time ago, and after recording it, um, some of the screen had frozen and screwed up, so I had to make, make it again. The first time I did it, it was almost an hour long video, and then when I screwed up halfway through, I got a little bit disheartened and uh, <laughs> did not continue. But this is going to be a video on masteries, and a lot of people are asking, you know, how do you. Uh, what masteries to give to which class, like how do you, which, how do you choose which masteries, and it's actually not too complicated. Um, let's choose a character randomly, we'll choose Tayral. He's uh, a well-known epic that most people want, and he's used for a lot of dungeons and a lot of clan boss uh, teams because of his skill set. He kind of provides a bunch of really good buffs and debuffs and uh, can use in multiple different places. He's defensive, so he lasts a long time. Um, you know, for gearing-wise, I see mine is geared with uh, lifesteal and speed. Uh, you want your speed in the 200-ish range, that's kind of the where you want to aim for. I mean, faster is better. He doesn't do a ton of damage on clan boss, but that's not really his purpose. His purpose is to provide attack down. Oops, as I clicked the wrong button. Let's go back to him, go to his masteries. Now, I'm talking about the three, there's three trees, right? Offense, defense, support. You get to choose from two of them. Um, you farm your scrolls from Minotaur Lair, all that stuff you can see in different videos. But let's kind of go over the two different, I guess the three different trees, and how the uh, each mastery kind of works. So the very top one of offense, you have Blade Disciple, and you have Deadly Precision. 99% um, of the time, you'll go with Deadly Precision. Crit rate uh, just adds to your damage a lot more than attack does. The only places where people seem to use attack and not crit rate is if you um, can easily max out your crit from gear <laughs> um, or sort of like bomb uh, characters because the attack damage increases your bomb damage where the crit, the bomb damage doesn't crit. That would be sort of the only place you would choose attack over crit in most cases, but even like characters like Lord Jazar um, want high crit and if you can get 5% extra crit just from a simple mastery versus having to get it on gear, potentially you can you know, tweak your gear to get more speed or other stats that are beneficial. So most of the times, people choose the crit. Uh, okay, and the second tier here. Um, for clan boss, I tend to go with this choice, Heart of Glory, because oftentimes I'm running with um, Bad L, who puts continuous heal on everybody constantly, and so at the beginning of the turn they will take the heal, and they will be at full health when attacking. The other choice that a lot of people go for is this one, Grim Resolve. So when you get low in health, uh, you do more damage. And this pairs nicely with Life Drinker, which is in the third tier there. Um, when you're less than 50% health, you heal. But because I already have Life Steal set on uh, Tayrell, and as far as bumping the damage up even 5% is beneficial, this doesn't affect you know poisons or um, Giant Slayer, War Master, anything like that. It's just purely the so we'll call the white damage that you do, uh, which isn't a lot to begin with. So I mean that talent doesn't make a huge difference, which is why most people choose this one for that little bit of extra damage and healing. Um, I don't think it's a big deal either way. <laughs> if you guys think differently, let me know. And this one, Keen Strike, ten percent crit damage. That's pretty much a no-brainer. Um, most people will choose that one by default, almost. Um, actually, just mentioning this now, in the offense tree, if you look at the left two columns versus the right two columns, left two columns are sort of more PvE related, and the right two will be more PvP related. Typically, there are some exceptions, of course. If you look at this one, Shield Breaker, which is on the right hand side, the PvP oriented one, uh, Shield Buff. So, most dungeons that you play, uh, you know, other than maybe the magic uh, potion keep, you don't really encounter enemies with shields on them. Uh, but in arena you do, so that's why this would be typically more of an arena type mastery. Still very good, definitely recommended if your um, character does a lot of arena. So you kind of got to choose. Um, so for example, my Fujian is an arena character, but I also use him in clan boss. And with the way arena is right now, it's not overly difficult. I still gear most of my characters more PvE oriented for dungeons or clan boss, however they're being used. And so I don't have a lot of PvP-centered characters yet. If Arena gets tougher, I uh, might consider 
redoing the masteries at that point. Let's go keep going here. So this is the third row in the offensive tree. Starts with single out. Um, more damage to targets with less than 40% HP. Now you have to consider when you're attacking the clan boss, if you're going to use this or not. There are some other choices. Um, and it might depend if your character has buffs or not. So when you pair it with the support tree, typically people will go life drinker sort of by default because the healer keeps your character alive, which tends to do more damage. If you're in a guild where you're not killing the clan boss, you want to do as much damage as possible, this might not do anything, right? If you don't get below 40%. Or if you're one of the people that's able to attack the clan boss early and your first two attacks are sort of uh, before the clan boss gets to below 50%, Again, that wouldn't do anything. Um, I'm just going to skip over to the support tree. So normally the characters are paired with something like uh, Rapid Response here, where if you have buffs, uh, you get extra turn meter. And turn meter is huge. The extra speed, more attacks, more heals, what, more debuffs, all that kind of stuff. So anything that increases your turn meter or speed is probably number one for clan boss. The extra damage from all these things, other than War Master and Giant Slayer, uh, are not super critical, but they're nice to have. So you're kind of just choosing which ones are nice to have uh, for the clan boss. Um, so going over this side, this is the third one of the rogues, we already did life drinker. We'll run to death. Uh, this would be useful for campaign farmers. Um, if you're at the stage where you're not one-shotting uh, all the waves of enemies when you're a campaign farmer, and say um, you know, the Executioner or Relic Keeper stage, you know, the, the early campaign farmers, oftentimes the other food characters that you're running with will die. Uh, this extra speed is sort of a nice to have in that case. Also usable in Arena, uh, maybe characters like Skullcrown, you know, that survive or Deathless. They're kind of using after your team has died, but it's not normally the best way to plan your Arena team if you're planning for your other teammates to be dead by the time you use it. So instead, most people would probably choose this one. Uh, great for speed bursty teams, but pretty much good for every character that the first attack you do does a lot more damage Because damage is so uh, Huge in this game if you can one-shot an enemy and this extra 8% gives you that extra damage um, Highly sought after this is pretty much the default one for arena But in most dungeons especially on clan boss, you know, it only works for one hit Not as important for those cases. So again, that's the right side is the more arena more campaign farmer side, left side is PvE. Going down to the fourth row, bring it on, uh, basically works great for dungeons. So in arena, it's, it's sort of hit or miss. I mean, you, you may have more health or less health than the enemy. Hard to tell. <laughs> it's hard to count those little bars to see who has more HP. But definitely for clan boss, that's just a big damage boost. Pretty much an easy choice there. Um, Wrath of the Slain again. Good for your campaign farmer, maybe good in arena on certain characters, but you don't really plan to have dead allies, so uh, maybe like a skull crown would definitely take this, because oftentimes skull crown all your enemies or your other teammates are dead. They get you get the last hit off or whatever. That would be a case of using it. Cycle of violence, skipping ahead here. Um, this is a good alternate choice. So you would take cycle of violence, especially on dungeons. Because all times, if, especially if you're doing, say, an auto dungeon, your characters are going to go in, use their A2 and A3, their big powerful abilities, before they get to the final sort of boss level, stage 3. And so this has a chance of resetting your abilities because oftentimes they're, you know, killing enemies. So, uh, useful there, but it doesn't really work well on the clan boss. But if you don't have, um, you know, buffs or debuffs, you don't necessarily need to have Cycle of Magic. Most people will go with Lord of Steel to get for debuffs. And the time you need Cycle of Magic is if you have lasting, you need lasting gifts. So if your character casts buffs, you definitely need to get sort of both sides of the support tree. So this lasting gifts one and the debuff version, which is Master Hexer. So um, that might be a case where you don't take this talent. Um, if you're character is solely being used for clan boss, you also don't need it. So I do use Tayrel in um, other areas as well, other dungeons, but not my sole purpose. So I decided to go with this one. I mean, it's pretty small, but just the chance of getting that extra defense down, you know, once in a while, or the turn meter down, I thought would be worth it. 
Um, I guess Tremere doesn't work on clan boss, so the extra defense down. But realistically, I think this one would probably be better in most cases. So it's like a violence, like if you're doing a dungeon, uh, say stuff like uh, Spider Boss, you know, this is great for AoE type characters. So this is probably the more recommended one. Uh, I was trying this one out because I was using Tayrell solely for clan boss for so long. Uh, maybe maybe not the best choice, but you know, those are those decisions you have to make. Opportunist year, um, great for certain arena type abilities, but obviously uh, most of the dungeons and uh, especially the clan boss, you cannot stun, sleep, or freeze. But in arena, super beneficial. So if you can freeze somebody and do extra damage to them, uh, if you have a character like Robar who has tons of stuns, if you have Shirmani who has freezes, uh, <clears throat> the only character with those type of CCs, great, great ability to toss in there. So this would be on your offensive character paired with those other ones. Uh, oh, so <laughs> I have a feeling this is going to be a long video again. Uh, row 5 here, Methodical. Pretty much the given if you're going to get Warmaster. Um, and the hard thing is, I think Giant Slayer should be right beside Warmaster, but instead they have Hell Smasher in between. So this next one, Kill Streak, you only really take it. It's, it's definitely more of an arena type ability. Um, because, especially on Clan Boss, you're not killing enemies and using this. But most people end up taking this in order to get Giant Slayer. It's sort of the diagonal to get Giant Slayer. Um, so this bottom, this, this fifth row here, you can have three PvP type abilities, arena type abilities. Blood Shield, you kill an enemy, put a shield on. Uh, awesome ability to have in a lot of cases. Um, if your characters do high damage, right, you wouldn't necessarily put that on a support character or anything like that. And then, um, the good for sort of tankier defensive teams where you're um, getting debuffed. Uh, more damage based off how many debuffs you have. Very interesting. Um, so yeah, so like I said, so methodical, definitely the only PvE talent you need in here. But sometimes people have to take kill streak to get to Giant Slayer. That would be the only case for those option ones. You have better options in the support tree, which is the fifth row is kind of where people want to get to in the support tree for some of the turn meter increases. Um, but yeah, so basically methodical is a given for most PvE cases. The other three are optional for PvP type cases. Sixth row here, we have War Master. Pretty much the given. Um, it's an easy decision if the character is has their A1 is one or two hits, typically you'll default to Warmaster. There are some exceptions though. Um, characters such as Aothar, they're trying to use their A2 or A3 abilities a lot more. Um, and they're say a four hit ability. On those characters, you consider using Giant Slayer. So if you have a um, three or four hit ability or, or two of them on say three or four hit cooldowns, uh, it, probably is better to use Giant Slayer. So Giant Slayer, they just recently buffed, it does a little bit more damage, and um, used to do even more. They kind of reduced damage a little bit, then buffed it back up a bit. They made Giant Slayer and War Master sort of equivalent, and that was sort of um, not ideal when they were totally equal because a lot of characters may have a, say a one or two, say a three hit, we'll call it A1, which would dictate using Giant Slayer, but their A2 and A3s would be one hit abilities. And in those cases, right, that you have to contemplate maybe War Master would be better overall because you're actually using one hit abilities more often or as often as possible. But the buff to Giant Slayer slightly because it's hard to get multi hit heroes kind of leans towards um, you want Giant Slayer wherever possible. So an easy character to, to decide on would say be uh, Cold Heart would be one, uh, Aethel. Be another one, right? Because Aethel, you know, Aethel skills, Aethel's only real attacking skill you're going to use on Clown Boss is her A1. You're not really going to use Divine Blades because there's only one hero, does less damage than your A1 ability, doesn't provide any debuffs. Um, and your third ability here is basically just buffing yourself. So you're basically going to use uh, your A1 every single time if possible if you're autoing. So she would definitely get Giant Slayer. Uh, a character, so I don't have one here. Say, like, this is a good choice actually. So, Aethar, if you get their skills, 
has a two hit ability so you're like okay well it's borderline probably better to go with uh, war master in most cases but you look at the a2 ability here and it's a four hit so you got two hit and a four hit which you're going to use probably uh, exclusively you're probably not going to use the a3 on clan boss at least at all so that would dictate use giant slayer because for you kind of getting um the three hits a little less than three hits between two and three hits on average on the boss which, which kind of dictates to use giant slayer so it's not a, a totally set in stone thing to use war master if your a1 is two or one or two hits there are characters like Aethor here where it'd be a, a choice um but someone like I don't have a good example of an a3 ability but juliana where she does have a two hit a1 but she also has a and she has a two hit a2 and a one hit a3 so she'd probably be borderline probably better off with with uh, war master than giant slayer and i think that's the way most people go with her so let's go into her masteries I mean, it's similar to tayrell in terms of how i geared her i exclusively use juliana for the clan boss i think it's actually an identical tree i made the same choices in terms of <laughs> masteries up there go back into tier six here we talked about war master and giant slayer a little bit Hell Smasher, they recently buffed a little bit. They had an extra 5% um, to the uh, damage. It's still a 50% chance, though, which makes it uh, a little bit random. So that's the part that people don't like. If it was just a straight 25% ignore defense all the time, it could be fantastic. It does increase your defense sig or your damage significantly to ignore defense. There's more and more defensive type teams out there. Uh, more and more characters like Martyr in in uh, the clan boss level, Warchief, Norog, you know, these really defensive type heroes. So with more and more of that coming out, the increased defense or ignoring defense is a, is a huge benefit. The fact that it's a 50% chance kind of ruins it. So if you're trying to go for a really bursty team, you're trying to burst down a very defensive team, and this skill 50% of the time does not work, it kind of hurts. And so for that reason, most people choose the fourth tier, fourth one for arena, which is just guaranteed crit damage plus 20%. So if you have a very bursty team, this is a lot more consistent than the ignore damage. The ignore, sorry, ignore defense. The ignore defense is probably a bigger damage increase overall uh, when it procs. It just, when it doesn't proc, it hurts. So uh, Flux Execution and Hell Smasher are definitely more sort of PvP type abilities, but you could use Hell Smasher PvE and just would probably get outshone like if you're doing um, a lot of dungeons um, especially on uh, bosses that don't have a lot of health like say the the force keep boss that the potion bosses um, spider and dragon kind of have higher health but say fire knight for example who doesn't have a ton of health your war master doesn't do a lot of damage but your uh, Hell Smasher would so if you're not doing a clan boss with a character, you may not need, um, and you're not using them for dragon or spider dungeon bosses, then maybe you do want to go with a Hell Smasher instead of War Master. The downside is it's very costly to respec. So you have to make a decision on what your, your character or hero is going to be used for and kind of go with that. But I mean, War Master is definitely not a must have in all instances for all characters. And especially in arena, it doesn't add significant arena damage, so as some of the other abilities would. So, it is awesome to have, just not totally given. We'll go over the defense tree. And, uh, sort of when I started out, it was, it was mostly offense and support masteries and sort of all the guides and everything I read at the time. Focus on those two, because those are probably the two they use for most dungeons. But, there are some very interesting cases to use defense. I'll actually switch over to Aethla here, because in Aethla I actually did choose the offense and defense trees over the support tree. Now, if your characters have buffs or debuffs, support tree is pretty much a given. So in a character that adds um, buffs to your team and debuffs the boss like Steel Skull, you know, the mastery is very important. Or healing, healing especially, you definitely go into the support tree. But let's look at Aethla here, because we're talking about defense tree. Open that up. So the two top choices. Um, resistance is is good to have, more so in PvP. Um, defense isn't really split into PvP, PvE as much. Like you can kind of take a spattering of 
uh, abilities all over the place. It's the one tree I'm not as familiar with, so we'll just go over it a little bit more slowly or carefully here. Um, both the defense option and the um, resistance option, not really the greatest, but okay to have. So which one you choose kind of is mostly dictated by which uh, next abilities you want to get. <laughs> so for Aethel here, um, the clan boss, and most dungeons in particular, the bosses do AoE damage a lot. So reducing any of the damage taken from that, I thought, why not? The next tier here, Rejuvenation. Um, so I think this ability does work with lifesteal. Correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of the healing type the talents do work with lifesteal characters, so if my Aethel is geared with lifesteal, so this might not be a bad choice, but um, typically the lifesteal, when in uh, Giant Slayer or Warmaster procs, um, the lifesteal heals the full anyways, so the extra 5% here I didn't think would be as big a difference, but those both those two choices are pretty good for, for clan boss if your character is either, if you have a healer in your party or wearing vamp or lifesteal set. Um, I guess this one is definitely more of a PvP type ability, so if you get CC'd and you already have the uh, debuff, then you take less damage. So it's good if there's in the clown boss you do get stunned, so that counts, but usually your stun will have gone away before the, the boss's next turn, so you won't be taking extra damage. And same with most dungeons. Uh, so I don't... Maybe with Faction Wars and how that works, this talent might be more popular, and definitely more so in Arena. Um, but yeah, not highly common. This one would probably be a better choice for, say, Arena, where everyone runs really high crit, and you just take a you know, flat 8% decrease in damage. That can be pretty good. So Approved Parry is probably the um, Arena type one. In most dungeons, most of the dungeon bosses do not crit. So you don't need a PvE. So I guess in that case, the right side is more PvP oriented. Shadow Heal, which is buffed, used to be a 3% heal. Now it's a 6% heal. This can be really good on certain dungeons, right? Where the bosses heal. Can be very good for Arena, where there's healing. Can be good, very good in against a Rain Beast, where he puts continuous heal up all the time. Um, so 6% is a good ability. It's not game breaking by any means. Uh, but definitely nice to have, and definitely good on a, a sort of a tankier team. Uh, the second ability here, Resurgent, um, removes debuffs when they lose um, HP. So this is actually good for the clan boss. So when he does use his stun ability, and um, you know does a bunch of damage to you, more than twenty five percent, and you get stunned, you have a chance to remove the stun. So it's not that you can resist the clan boss's stun, but if you have this ability. It can be removed, I think. <laughs> so maybe I have to double check that, but I think I've seen Aethel get hit with a stun and then a stun gets removed, so I think it's that ability. The third talent in the third row here, Bloodthirst, heals a champion by 10% when they kill an enemy. That is uh, pretty cool. So that can be really good in certain arena cases. It can be very good in um, certain dungeons. And if they make something where it's like kind of like a gauntlet, Maybe faction wars will be. We went through cycle after cycle after cycle of enemy. You do want you know, kind of healing, so this type of ability would be good in that instance. Wisdom of battle, there is a chance of placing a block debuffs on the champion when they're stunned, um, or sorry, when they're when the CC on them expires, so they can't be stunned again. Now, could be very niche use on certain bosses. Um, or sorry, not certain bosses in certain arena teams where they they place a lot of debuffs, poison, stuns, uh, CCs. I have lost two teams like that if they end up going first. This type of ability could be very useful there, but 30% is kind of a low chance. Uh, hit or miss, but you know, most of these masteries are kind of like that. They're, they're small increases that can be pretty good, but a lot of them are kind of niche. So where are we here? We're in the fourth row, Solidarity. Um, so if you have a character that puts a lot of buffs, say Shamrock, this would be a, an amazing ability for someone like Shamrock, who can put three or four buffs onto 
each team member and there's also would add them five uh, resist per buff so 15 or 20 resist can be pretty good I chose this one especially on clan boss where you're getting hit by the same enemy over and over again just basically stacks up and reduces the damage taken by six percent that's a pretty easy choice for clan boss harvest despair has six percent chance of placing a leech I think leech is like a one percent lifesteal so depending on what damage you do and I'm not totally sure if leech also counts for uh, like giant slayer and war master procs but uh, that is one to research I mean that could be very good if you could place that consistently uh, but again you have to be able to on a character like Robar, I think I may have chosen this so it pushes the le leech debuff everyone else that attacks gets a little bit of healing but I don't think the healing really makes a big difference in most cases uh, stubbornness you get more resist when you have debuffs on you so if you're fighting teams that put a lot of debuffs up you get more resist probably good on maybe a character like Scartosis or someone else that can remove everybody else's debuffs and you don't want them to get stunned so you put high resist on them and this basically just uh, if they do get a debuff on them gives everyone else more resist I don't know just thinking out loud here <laughs> keep going like there's mostly very niche uses for a lot of these selfless defender um, basically decreases the damage other people hit for like the burst damage and then it gets funneled into this character you see this kind of paired with bulwark a little bit this is really good for high defense tanky characters um, characters that can absorb damage characters that have unkillable or those kind of things that's where you could definitely use selfless defender cycle of revenge it's, uh, oh so when your allies get hit you get turn meter increase now that's uh, super handy in the arena especially if you're on a tanky counterattack type team where your team member is always going to get hit you may not be a fast bursty type team maybe you don't have like a gore grab or seeker or Lissandra to, to buff turn meter or apothecary so you know you're going to get hit and this will kind of increase your uh, turn meter when all your allies are getting hit so that can be very very it's a great ability for arena uh, again not as useful in dungeons because most of the bosses and stuff don't crit the two ones that I would recommend this is kind of the whole reason for going to the defense tree and a clan boss hero is you get a counterattack um, when they lose health so when the clan boss does their big AOE damage there's a chance to counterattack there and also the deterrence when an ally gets stunned they can also have a chance to counterattack so those two things can be very very handy so just to give you extra hits and so because of those and because eighth levels um, weaken ability was on their a1 it seemed like a better idea to get the counterattack uh, potential from these abilities rather than focus on the turn meter and chance of increasing debuff length that you get from the support tree so those are the main decisions of going defense tree for masteries um, 200 defense I mean that can be a big increase for a lot of characters like attack type characters but you would never take this over the giant slayer war master choices so probably not used that often bulwark is probably the reason why most tanky characters defensive characters go into this tree basically reduces the damage from everybody else funnels at this character but if you have a really high defensive character your damage from that damage is reduced fearsome presence I actually am testing out and working on um, Robar he's the orc legendary that that basically stuns on his a1 attack and if he lands a stun then he gets to attack again so getting to attack another character again randomly is pretty huge so the extra five percent I thought would be worth it so I'm using him the I'm yeah <laughs> it, it could be good I still in practice like the way the arena is right now is a little bit simplified and so his abilities it it does work he's not fully geared I've tested him out a few times and you know he'll stun one or two or maybe three characters in a row and it, it's kind of cool so I mean it's, it's, a, it's a fun thing to do but if it doesn't work then all of this is kind of wasted and I do have a, a better AoE damage get characters. It doesn't totally fit into my team. It's just kind of a fun thing to try out because I got the character. So I, I did actually take. Uh, I'm going for this ability with him. I think I can show that. Where is he? Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't think I have all the points yet. Yeah, so I still have to farm a bunch more scrolls with them. But that's where I was going. So increase chance of placing stun. I end up, you know, putting a stun set on them. Definitely needs. It's not great gear. It needs to be leveled up. Um, I was hoping to farm up some better gear for him. Um, I think he probably needs a bunch more crit, which is most of the gear is missing, and a bunch more speed. He's kind of on the lower end of the speed scale. He's slow to begin with, uh, and then couldn't really find a way to put speed into his his gear set as much. He does have speed boots, but um, so once I find some better gear for him and level it up, then it'll be worth trying. Just go back into his masteries to finish stuff. Oh, and the last one, X resist. Again, not the <laughs> most sought after talent. I think it's usually bulwark, or on occasion maybe first and presence, but typically bulwark that people are going into the defense tree for if they're not going for one of the more offensive type abilities. Okay, into the final tree, the support tree. Now, like I was kind of alluding to before, the support tree is the buff and debuff tree uh, and healers. So basically, if your character says support on them, then they probably fall into one of the categories that work well in this tree. You may choose to go defense or offense with them, but the whole sole purpose of them is to put buffs or debuffs on or heal, and so they're probably going to want this tree by default. So 8 or 10 HP is not a lot in the grand scheme of things. Most characters, uh, by the time they hit level 60, are in the 30-40k plus range at least even for attack type characters, and up to, you know, 60, 70, 80, maybe you not know, 80, but 50 to 70k um, for the tankier type characters. So you add 800 health and it doesn't do much. But in cases where you're a support type character without any debuffs, like if you're solely a healer with buffs, you don't need the accuracy, so you would go with the health. And that kind of lines up well because the character, the, Left side of the support tree, the left two columns, are more of the buff and heal side, and the right side are more of the debuff side. So starting off with Lay on Hands here in row two, increases heals that they cast. Uh, I've heard that Lifesteal set works with this, it counts as a heal that they're casting. Might be wrong on that, but it's 5%, and I think, uh, I think that's multiplicative and not additive, meaning that if you know, it's increasing. If you heal for 100, um, sorry, if you heal for, say, 1% of someone's health, this gives you a 1.05% heal, not a 6% heal. That's what multiplicative in that sense means. And increases the values of shield by 5%. So again, if your shield is going to put on 1,000 health, this gives you 1,050. Not game-breaking, but it helps. Exult in death. Um, it's a heal. This is sort of better than the defensive tree heal because it doesn't matter if you kill them or someone else kills them. It's just whenever an enemy is killed, you get a heal. So good in in number of cases. Charge focus is basically it's really good on characters that only have one cooldown that they need to debuff with. So a character like um, Bad L, for example. So you either have an A1 attack. And you have, or you have a A2, which is put on some poison debuffs. Basically, when this goes off, you don't have any skills on cooldown. It's tougher for characters, say like Juliana, who have multiple different skills um, that they want to use. So you want to land your poisons, and you want to land your fire purgation. So basically, what happens is that at any given time, one of these is most likely on cooldown. So then, even though we have this ability. Oftentimes you don't benefit from the accuracy from it because uh, you get it for the first time, the very first ability, and maybe once or twice throughout the fight. Both other abilities will be off cooldown, but very rarely. So it's cool. 20 accuracy is pretty good. Just uh, in practice, hard to use on a lot of different characters. But easy on some. So uh, healing saver here in the third row increases the healing by shield buffs. Um, Oh, sorry. Increases the healing and the end shields if the target has less than 40%. So, somewhat situational, but it does happen. And uh, if you're a healer, you probably take it by default. However, 
if you're a healer with the continuous heal, which counts as a buff, I believe. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I've seen... Well, maybe I've double-checked that. So any buff that you cast, once it expires, you get a turn meter increase. That is pretty huge. So this one and the fourth one here, which is the same ability but for debuffs, are very powerful. Basically, if you have a character that can put on a lot of buffs and a lot of debuffs, those two abilities are fantastic. It can just be a little bit tricky to get them both, right? Because um, if you have debuffs, you probably need the accuracy tree. And then you probably don't use this ability, so you end up taking Exalt and Death, which on the clan boss doesn't help you at all, just to get Rapid Response. So oftentimes you'll see Rapid Response, looks like a bad L. He'd be a perfect example, I think that's how I have him. Oh, I don't even. Terrible. So I probably should switch that up. So I probably should have gotten rid of this ability and put this on instead. I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I should respec him. Ah, I already used it. So I think this ability would be better. So you want rapid response for turn meter increase and you want this. I just wasn't thinking, I guess, when I leveled him up before. Bad, bad. Um, the one in between here is great if there's lots of enemies. So, uh, extra 16, well, up to 16. So on the spider boss, for example, where there's always tons of little spiders around, I think that would count, and it just basically gives you 16 accuracy more. Uh, great for characters that need to put debuffs up in that case. But on clan boss, it's, it's 4 accuracy, so it's not huge. So you don't normally take it for your clan boss characters, but it could be useful in some situations. And again, this was the uh, the debuff version of the increased turn meter. So, row four. First Aid. Um, if you are in this maybe in arena type situations where you're getting CC'd, uh, could be used in clan boss, right? Uh, when you're healing the stunned character. So a character like Steel Skull, where they have a heal and it removes a debuff, and you use your Steel Skull's ability on characters that have been stunned, this one's perfect for that. The second ability here, 5% um, chance of a skill being cooled down. It's such a small chance, but it can be very powerful when it happens. Uh, it can be very random. In longer fights like the clan boss, it probably happens once. It just depends if it happens on the ability that you want at the time that you want. So uh, it's kind of hit or miss. It's not normally the ideal choice just because it's such a random ability that you can't count on. However, I seem to have taken it. Mostly because I needed to get to the ones below it, the turn meter one below it. Um, going across here, Lore Steel, if you have the basic stats are basically um, life, offense, defense, speed, uh, accuracy, all the uh, two piece sets, doesn't work on Immortal and Cruel, which are the ones you get from the clan boss chests, as far as I know. So, but basically, great for speed characters. If you have a speed character, you want this ability, it gives you that extra speed. Evil Eye, this is absolutely fantastic for uh, the arena. So I have this on, on my Seeker, and any character that uh, sort of is a high speed speed boost, like uh, Gorgrab or Lissandra, who's attacking first, now they already have turn meter reduction, this gives you a little bit more turn meter reduction. Uh, it procs quite often. And it can be the difference between a win or a loss in arena, so it's pretty much a must-have in arena for your speedy go first type characters. Gorg Robin Seeker and, and such. Row five here, lasting gifts. Um, now these are the masteries that you kind of go for in the support tree. So the characters that have buffs um, want the extended buff, because it gives you an extra turn of buffs, and characters that have debuffs want the extra turn of debuffs. Fantastic for like skull crushers, characters with powerful um, buff abilities like increased defense, counterattack, uh, continuous heals, everything, basically every buff you want an extra turn of. So fantastic one to get. It can be a little bit tricky if your if your character has both debuffs and buffs in terms of which ones you choose. But there you go. Um, this is the. Uh, uh, the campaign farmer and most of the times if your arena team is dead and you're the last one standing the extra speed isn't going to help because you have probably multiple enemies against yourself 
But if it ends up being a one-on-one -on -one fight, right, the extra 24 speed could be pretty good. Sniper, now this is a must-have for a lot of um, debuff heroes. So characters that need to place debuffs, just skip out here. So say Tayrell or do I have an online light crown here? I think I want for the extra buff duration. Tough choice on that one too. Let's see Tayrell. He must have a yeah, yeah, sniper. So characters that you need to land debuffs. So for Tayrell, it's his attack down debuff. Uh, extra five percent is fantastic. If on my row bar or something like that, I was in the support tree. The extra five percent for the stun would be very good. Oh no, sorry. Scratch that. I guess that's why he's not in the support tree. Doesn't work on the CCs. Only works on the, you know, attack down, defense down, weaken those type of abilities. Um, oh yeah, Master Hexter. Basically, similar to Lasting Gifts, increases debuffs. The bottom tier for support is kind of lacking. Like we talked about with the 810 health, 3000 HP is not game changing either. Um, a little bit of a boost when your allies drop below can be good if you have you know an unkillable or a block damage buff or something but uh, again sort of random hit or miss not necessarily game breaking um, now this could be good if you have a lot of debuffs you're casting so if you're a character that turns out puts a lot of um, poisons up and you know 10% turn meter 10% speed boost could be pretty good, um, but again, not better than a lot of the damaging abilities. 50 accuracy flat, you could probably get you get enough accuracy from most of the uh, gear that you have. And if you're a debuff hero, you're probably already gearing. You get, you get accuracy banner, and you know if you need to accuracy set pieces. So the extra 50 accuracy here is not necessarily um, I, something you need. It seems like if you have 200, 220 plus accuracy right now, you don't really miss. So an extra 50 accuracy is only needed if you really don't have another option. And you're probably much better off getting something like uh, War Master, and that'll typically help your team more than the extra accuracy that you're getting. Oh, all right, so again, this is a, another pretty long video. Kind of went over all the masteries. I'm gonna show you the characters that I have and why I've chosen certain ones. Uh, let's see here, so certain Nicholas went with War Master, we want to get him, and went with heal and shielding in the support tree. Could also be very good with defense. I've seen a lot of people use sort of a defensive defense and support build, but because he, he has that shield ability and continuous heals, most likely he's going to take the support tree by default, and then whether you go offense or defense sort of depends on how you're going to use him. I was using him a lot on different dungeons. Um, the way I geared him was with a shield set because the shield set it buffs based off his HP. I geared him with all HP and he's actually very slow. He doesn't even have speed boots. So if you're gonna use him in arena, I want the speed boots because I basically just use him for um, dungeons and the, the shield buff that he provides, he was okay this way. I did not uh, level up any of his skills, but uh, stuff like his unkillable at four turns could be pretty amazing. Like he's a great character to have um, I was lucky that I fused him in time just before the fusion ended. And you can gear him different ways. So you can gear him for more of an offensive type role. His damage is based off HP. His damage seems to scale very well. Uh, you know, his abilities do more damage than, say, a character like uh, Vrask, who's also an HP type hero. But I like him a lot. So, Sir Nicholas, I haven't used him a ton lately. And arena defense isn't really something that I need to focus on. But he's still using it occasionally on some of the dungeons, like I use him on Ice Golem. And uh, for that reason, probably could switch his bottom ability out here. Like, it doesn't necessarily need War Master. Could probably have uh, even like Hell Smasher, could be very good for increased damage on um, non clan boss dungeons and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, you saw my row bar, he's work in progress. Went with the offensive and defense tree with the goal of getting fearsome presence at some point. Definitely going to be a soul arena type build. So you can see I geared a little bit more for the right side of the tree there to do kind of a bursty stun type uh, <laughs> type character. 
work in progress once uh, I've been focusing on farming stuff for Arbiter and leveling characters and that kind of thing, but we'd like to go back to Robar at some point. Bad Al took the... I used Bad Al for lots of different dungeons, and as well as on the clan boss. So, the thing I would change about him right now is I probably would try to get Rapid Response. So what that would mean was I'd have to scrap um, Heart of Glory and single out and end up getting something like Exalt in Death or Shield Bearer, which neither of ones are really good for PvE. Well, actually, this one's not bad um, for dungeons. And then it would get rapid response. That could be totally fine. So something to consider if I want to spend 150 gems to do that. Fushan, I'm using a clan boss right now. Uh, I'm also using him in my arena. He's one of my main arena guys. He's one of my legendaries that is fully skilled because I really wanted the uh, cooldown reduction for clan boss type stuff to keep, to keep his decrease defense up. The reason he's used a lot in clan boss is he provides the speed aura. Um, with him and Lissandra both provide 24%. Gore grab also provides a 23% boost, but he's not as useful in arena. Or sorry, in uh, his might be arena only too. I mean, yeah, so it's not that many characters that give you the 24% speed boost. So if you're going more of a speed team, and you can even drop the counterattack, then Fushan is almost a must-have. So he's a very good legendary for that reason. I know a lot of tier lists rate him low on clan boss, maybe because they're not right, <laughs> or they don't know. But uh, super powerful, super important for clan boss. So the way I use his masteries is I wanted to make sure that his, his defense down is sort of critical, his speed boost is critical, and he actually does pretty great damage as well. I don't have him in vamp set right now, because I'm using him in arena, and I want as much damage as possible. So again, I could probably swap that out, but I'm using a bad L on the team as well. So he kind of went for more of the debuff side focus. If I was using pure arena, probably would get Evil Eye, and then choose... I had um, the Ruthless Ambush on him for a while. It's just that, you know, arena doesn't matter as much right now. It's still... three arena matches are still pretty easy. I have probably a 98-99% win rate. A lot of losses are due to crashes or not loading. So arena's just too easy right now, so it doesn't really matter, but when it was purely arena focused, I would get Ruthless amb Ambush, and I would probably try to get um, the extra crit damage as well. So I'd definitely take a few more of these abilities on the right side of the offense tree that are better for arena. And then still go with a support tree, because defense down, debuffs and stuff are super handy to have. A big one is my campaign farmer. I also use him in arena. I think he's fantastic with his turn meter reduction. Uh, I use him as well in a lot of dungeons, which is why I went with the uh, war master type ability there. I don't use him on clan boss, so could I swap that out? But um, we'll see how spider 16 to 18 stages go. Um, even farming trash before most mobs. Uh, so I use him for in a lot of cases, and then. This is a toss-up between War Master and uh, sort of Hell Smasher, or it's hard to get uh, flawless execution in most cases. But I probably could have taken this. I actually took this by accident, so didn't want to spend 150 gems and reset it. But he definitely does not really need this. Um, but I guess because of dungeons, it was an okay choice. Didn't really have anything else to put it in. When he's my campaign farmer, I didn't take a lot of the campaign farming abilities that um, requires the other characters to be dead because typically he farms so fast that the characters don't die. So didn't bother with those abilities, instead went more of a pure damage type build. I thought maybe he could be used for clown boss, but he just doesn't have, like most of his other skills, the decrease speed, the stuns, decrease accuracy, isn't it that important, aren't that great for clan boss. Could be good for some dungeons, but he's he's sort of a hybrid campaign farmer slash arena type guy right now. And even then, oops, definitely room for switching some stuff up. So I could probably choose instead of instead of getting a War Master, I think House Master would probably be a better choice. Something that I can consider later. At the moment, not make or break it. Um, Royal Huntsman is another arena character. His big thing, I'll go to his skills here, is he has a uh, ignore defense of defense, a three ability, and he has a decreased defense. 
So for that reason I went with some support tree stuff. I used him in certain dungeons, thinking that the War Master would be better for those. Um, but what I found is he's very squishy, and oftentimes I'll use my A3 first if you have like a Skull Crusher or a Martyr, like a counterattack type hero, or sometimes even on Gore Grab or Rush Guard, even though they're wrong affinity. And his A3 can usually one shot most characters if it crits. And when that happens, then he gets a little bit of a shield. So that's the only reason I went and took Blood Shield, which is a little bit different than, you know, the norm. But uh, most other choices weren't really that important. So that was sort of optional, situational. Um, same thing with the degree cooldowns. It would have been nice to have gotten this ability actually with the extra damage, but there's definitely ways he can be improved as well if it was just solely being an arena character. But because I was using him for some of the potion dungeons and maybe the dragon there, I can't remember all the cases, but that's why he was used. Um, Lissandra, I was trying out because I thought she could be a replacement in the arena for Seeker. So I've been using Seeker quite a bit on my arena team, and the thing that's, that Lissandra is lacking is her big uh, turn meter reduction ability, increased speed of everybody, increased turn meter of everybody, fantastic, fantastic ability. Could be really good on clan boss. <laughs> uh, maybe I should do a video on her as well. The choice is sort of between her and Apothecary and Seeker in terms of which one you want to use on clan boss. I actually ended up going with Seeker um, because a lot of my characters were attack based and just a little bit of extra attack and a little bit of extra damage does matter over time. He has a 30% increase on turn meter, which is a little bit better than Seeker's. Or sorry, than Apothecary's. Seeker doesn't have a speed increase like these two have. The only reason I haven't really used Lissandra yet is one is it requires some tomes to get her down to four turns. And four turns is just a little bit too much. So if you look at Apothecary's on speed boost here, you get it down to three turns. He's also a rare hero, much easier to farm and get duplicates for or use rare tombs. Uh, where Lissandra being a legendary character is very expensive to gear up. I don't necessarily need her aura because in most cases I have Fushan. The only case I would use Lissandra over Fushan would maybe be the uh, Spirit Affinity Clan boss. And using the legendary tomes just for her for that one instance didn't seem that great. And then what also happened is they announced Arbiter. And Arbiter basically duplicates all of her abilities and then makes her um, irrelevant. So <laughs> fills turn meters and gives a 50% uh, attack increase and has a heal. Doesn't have the speed boost, so that's maybe the only difference, but she kind of, well, it replaces Seeker for sure. Um, she provides a weaken. She revives heroes. Her aura doesn't work on clan boss, but it works well in arena. So, I mean, you could, if you really need that speed boost, you probably could have Apothecary. And one of the other things is, depending on your clan boss makeup, so I saw some people in the clan and they're a clan boss. I think some people run Apothecary. It might give you an idea of how it goes. Um, so, yeah, so if you run like a Skull Crusher um, with all your characters, most people are running lifesteal sets on their characters for high level clan boss, and that keeps them topped up pretty well. Um, the one character that you'll probably not run Vamp set on, or lifesteal set on, is your Skull Crusher. Your Skull Crusher has the uh, ally protection buff, which basically reduces damage your allies take, but increases damage you take. So Skull Crusher often takes a bunch of extra damage, and you just need a single target heal to heal them back up. So characters like Steel Skull and Apothecary as a backup kind of both work. So that extra heal is actually very important. So if you were to swap out Apothecary with Lissandra, in those cases, you lose that heal, you get a little bit of extra turn meter increase, which can help, but that could mean you know death for your um, Skull Crusher at some point. I can't show you what I mean if you're not familiar with Skull Crusher. So he places this stone wall, this is his counterattack ability, um, puts the on ally protection on. He does become unkillable, but what often happens is you know he'll take a bunch of damage from the clan boss's stun, he'll be low on health, and if you don't heal him up by the next turn when his unkillable is off, the next AoE will kill him. So that can be very detrimental. Martyr doesn't have that same problem. 
Um, Martyr's Counterattack uh, is also the same thing as a three turn ability. Also puts increased defense on ability. Like, Martyr is the better choice for the counterattack ability. She just has so many useful um, buffs and debuffs. She has a decreased defense, also has the increased defense and counterattack ability, and has a decreased attack. So, basically, every one of her abilities is super important. So, for that reason, she's probably like. If you get it for clan boss, you build your team around Martyr. She's that powerful. She's very, 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 very good hero to have. But Skull Crusher is, in some ways, equally um, good of a replacement, depending on the team that you work with. Um, it's just that Skull Crusher doesn't provide as much as many of the abilities that Martyr does. But when using Martyr, in some cases, you may want backup characters with their abilities, anyways. But that's an aside. Um, <laughs> Majold, uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do anything with him, but I slapped a little bit of gear on him. I tried him out on the uh, Spirit Keep dungeon just for fun. I did some masteries with him. I was going to see where I could use him. I mean, they did buff him a little bit. He's still not great in a lot of cases, but with Faction Wars coming up, you know, that could be a good place for him. So I leveled him anyways. Uh, Light Sworn is... Essentially, if you have a speed team and you can keep his brutality uh, decrease attack buff up, he basically is a good replacement for Tayrel. Tayrel does provide um, decreased defense, so you will need that from someone else. So in my case, I have Fushan to provide that, and I have Light Sworn, um, who on a three turn ability can keep decreased attack up. So you need to be one and a half times as fast as the boss, right? essentially, or faster, in order to keep this up, because you could get stunned, I guess, or whatever. The reason I chose him over Tyrell was the increased defense buff. So as you get later on, and you're taking a bunch more damage, the increased debuff and the decreased attack kind of gives you that sustain late game. Um, and for the most of the thing, he has a three hit ability, so you put Giant Slayer on him, um, and he does a little bit more damage than Tyrell does. He's also a void character, so when you get a force affinity clan boss, he's not as affected damage wise and his abilities don't miss as much as Tyrells do. So I was using Tyrell and on you know force deep bosses, he only has a I think it's a 50% chance to place his decrease attack. It does have in two hits, so most of the times it lands. But on the force affinity clan boss, you see a lot more resists, a lot more misses, and if you miss a decreased attack ability um, the clan boss will start to one-shot your team. So basically, it ends the fight early if you drop it. So you, you you can't have both. I mean, if it's a spirit boss or a magic boss, sure, no problem. Keep Tyrell on. But Light Sworn just became a better replacement once you get to a speedy point. So you can see his speed is pretty fast. Um, he's at, what's that, 3, no, 2, <laughs> not 3, 218, which is pretty quick. And then with Fushan's aura of 24%, yeah, a bunch of speed to that as well. So that'll give him an extra, you know, 20 some speed on top of that. Pretty handy. So hopefully that makes sense. Maybe we kind of touched on some of them. Debuff characters, you want the support tree for sure. And that's the way I went with most of my team. Steel Skull also has support talents. Uh, <laughs> Cold Heart, I tried one with the defensive tree with the counter attack. I was using Cold Heart on the spider boss and on Fire Knight's castle. I actually run two of them, so I geared up both of them. I think they're both uh, fully scared or fully skilled. Is this one fully skilled too? Oh, well, Heart Seeker is fully skilled, and that's the main point of that for Spider. It gets more and more expensive to go all the way down in Masteries. And I found like the uh, Giant Slayer procs on most of the dungeons don't matter. She's a bit squishy for clan boss, meaning that you know her health is pretty low, so it takes more and more effort to keep her alive, and her extra damage just doesn't outweigh the fact that she dies, you know, halfway through the fight that other characters survive too. So hard to use for clan boss on nightmare. <clears throat> Aethel, we talked about that one. I took the defensive tree for the counterattacks. Um I wasn't as worried about her debuff ability, weaken with her didn't typically fall off, 
And the fact that they nerfed Weaken quite a bit for poison damage also made it uh, made more sense for it to go to defensive tree. That's only the, the one unique character I have. Apothecary went with the support tree, Aothar support tree, because he has a bunch of poisons. Um, Vrask I just leveled up to. <laughs> I haven't got into the final tier, because that gets harder. Not sure what I would choose with him. I mean, his, uh, one thing is his attacks don't do a lot of damage, so, like, don't really need the offensive tree. Maybe it would be better to go the defensive tree and get some of the counterattack abilities. And I think I have a free reset with him. That's what I might actually do, right? Because it might be good to have these type of abilities, especially in dungeons. The reason I leveled him up um, over, say, Bad L, is I'm still using him in conjunction with Bad L on Ice Golem in some cases, or Steel Skull swapped in. And it depends on affinities. So it's nice to have healers of different affinities that can keep your team up. And that's sort of most of the characters that have masteries on my team. Hopefully that video helped. Again, very long. Lots of in-depth stuff about masteries. If you have any questions about that or gearing or anything like that, shoot me a comment and I'll do my best to respond to them. Um, but hopefully that guy gives you guys an idea of the ones I've chose, why I chose them. Um, it looks like I've screwed up a bunch of characters, or it could be improved. Um, and because all my characters are kind of like a hybrid type build where I use them in both uh, clan boss and dungeons and sometimes arena. And that made it a little bit tricky to gear some of them. and Or sorry, put masteries on some of them. But uh, yeah. Fushan, I had his power over... 50k at one point, but I swapped out um, some of the gear with the Cruel gear, and Cruel doesn't add as much power as, uh, say, extra crit or resist and stuff does, but it actually does more damage. The ignore uh, defense is pretty powerful. So I would recommend looking into that if you have a bunch of Cruel pieces around, you're not sure where they're to use them. He actually had just plain attack gear on before, which is probably pretty equivalent in stats. I guess that didn't change too much. Maybe his crit dropped a little bit. So that's one thing I kind of lost out on there. I think he had more higher crit rate before. But uh, we'll see going with crit damage for him. Actually, he has high accuracy just because the banner has a lot of speed, which is what I was going for. Oh, not an accuracy banner. Uh, I don't know why he has so much accuracy. I guess he has a few pieces with tons of accuracy. His neck has 32 accuracy. Which is a good place to get it. That's actually a pretty good neck. His helmet has a bunch of accuracy. But anyways, I digress. Not talking about gear in this one. We'll see about masteries. Those are the choices. Um, so most of them are not hard to choose. Most of them aren't game breaking. So you don't have to worry too much about it. It's mostly just a, in most cases, arena versus uh, you know, dungeons and clan boss. When they release faction wars, though, a lot of that will change. Because I think a lot of the arena type abilities that people aren't choosing right now because arena isn't that hard will become better uh, for faction wars. That's my prediction. We will see what happens. Hope you guys like the super long video over an hour, just like the last one. Hopefully this one doesn't have any video screw-ups like the last one did. <laughs> I don't think it does. Hope that was helpful. Like and subscribe. I'm tired now. This video was long. We'll see you guys in the next one.